My name is Dan Bitko and this is my wife Karen. We've been married for 19 years. I've been working as a music professional since 1981, playing and teaching both piano and guitar, all levels, all styles, and I've also done a fair amount of music soundtracks for TV and film. In 2010, I was fortunate enough to win an Emmy Award for Best Musical Composition. This award was for a children's program. So, just so happens I've done a lot of uh, TV work for children. We have been homeschooling our son for 10 years. And um, within that time period of homeschooling, I have found that using music to help our child learn things has been very, very helpful. And so at one point, we wanted our child to learn the catechism, the children's catechism. And since Dan is a musician, I said, Dan, why don't you put this to music? And he said, Karen, it's 145 questions. And I said, so? <laughs> and um, for a while, he just didn't have the time to do it. But when we moved down here, um, he had a good amount of time free. So I said, why don't you start working on that project? So this whole project really developed out of a desire to help my child, to help our child, learn the catechism. Okay, well first let's start with catechize. What is it to catechize? So to catechize basically means to teach using a questioning format. So I ask you a question, you answer. I ask you a question, you answer. So that's what catechizing means. So a catechism is when we take the doctrines and the principles of the Christian faith and we put them in a question and answer form. Now there's different kinds of catechisms. There's larger catechisms which are more appropriate for older children or adults. And then what we're working with here is the children's catechism. So they're getting those same principles, but in a form that's a little more simple for them to understand. We're not dumbing it down, we're just simplifying it. As Christians, whether we're children, teenagers, adults, we all struggle with sin, we all live in a world full of sin that constantly wants to pull us away from the path of Christ and it's not only important to have God's Word in our heart David said in the Psalms how can a young man keep his way pure by hiding thy word in my heart so we want our children to memorize scripture but we also think it's important that our children understand the principles what God teaches about man what God teaches about himself, how we should live. And these are the things that are summarized in the catechism. And so we feel it's beneficial and it's a tool for our children, a tool that they can have with them for the rest of their lives. Even as an adult, there are many times where I'm in a situation and a principle that I learned from the catechism comes to my mind and helps me. And we want our children to have those tools so that they'll have them for a lifetime. Music evokes emotion in people, in all of us. Music, well, first of all, music is powerful, it's fun, it adds another dimension. But when you put words to music, those words, the meaning of those words kind of come to life. All right, so there's a part in the Catechism that talks about original sin. And just the way the music comes across there is kind of very sad and um, the music helps get the point of sin across. You know, it's, it's kind of sad, it's... Um, whereas later on in in the Catechism when we talk about Christians going to heaven. The music builds, it's glorious. As a matter of fact, I heard, had one adult tell me that when she was listening to that and singing those words at the end of the Catechism, it just brought tears to her eyes, thinking of 
what heaven was going to be like. So what I'm trying to say is that music engages the emotions. So the words are engaging our minds. The music is engaging our emotions. And the Lord said we're to love him with all of our being, not just our minds, not just our emotions, but the two together. And I, we feel music marries those two together. I'll give you some examples. Um, for several years, I've tutored in, with an organization called Classical Conversations. Well, there's a reason why Classical Conversations sings their timeline. There's a reason why Classical Conversations sings their history sentences. There's a reason why Classical Conversations sings their Latin declensions. <laughs> it's because once kids sing it, they don't forget it. And there have been many times, not everything is put to song in CC, but there have been many times where we're learning English grammar things, and I will put it to a song, and those kids learn it, and they don't forget it. I don't know of many children who don't like to sing of some kind. I'm sure somewhere out there in the world there might be a few, but in general, kids love music. That's why we see so many um, kids' song CDs. You know, when I first had my son, there's all these CDs for kids for bedtime, and so I think kids find this fun because, let's face it, what kid really wants to sit down and memorize 145 answers it's hard and so if you let them sing it they just love it and they want to and um, not too long ago we were teaching a catechism class where they were not using music they had this great curriculum that you know had all the worksheets and the, the all the activities and yeah, everything. everything. Very well thought out, very well, was, well planned, but no music. It was a great curriculum. However, the kids struggled to learn the catechism. But you put the CD on, and it can just be passive listening. You know, you put it on while they're playing. You um, put it on while they're going to bed, or when you're in the car. And just by osmosis... <laughs> they start learning it. And so then you can actually, you know, as they get older, you can talk to them about what it means. Some people think that it's useless to just memorize something if you don't know what it means. But it's not. And again, these truths are brought down to a simpler level so that the kids can understand. <laughs> So when we decided to share this with other families, we thought, well, we need to record it and we need to um, have singers. And so my son wasn't crazy about recording. <laughs> he likes to sing, but he was self-conscious and didn't want his voice on, on a CD that would go out to many people. So I talked to a friend and told her what we were doing and she said, oh, this is great. I just, I know where you can get the singers. So she introduced us to um, Barbara Van Patter, who a lot of people know um, is the director of Musical Airs, which is a homeschool choir that rehearses at Christ's Covenant. So we contacted Barbara and she sent a whole slew of kids over to us. <laughs> and so at that point we started to think a little more deeply of how instead of just having one voice sing all the answers we started to think well maybe we want two here and three here and make it more musically interesting so we auditioned a number of singers and everyone that came to sing for us was really good um, if we didn't use them it's just because some some of their voices were a little more mature and older than we thought we want it for this project, but I'm happy to say that every singer who sang on this CD is a homeschooler. I 
I think that it does heighten their spirituality because the music is a vehicle to helping them understand what the Bible wants to teach Christians and anything that helps us to understand God's word better heightens our spiritual spiritual spirituality so I do think it, it's definitely um, a tool for doing that back to where we started from so years ago when I said to Dan Dan help me help compose something so Seth can learn this catechism <laughs> um, now we have a CD we started out doing this just for our family but then when we realized how great it worked we thought well let's share it with other people and then other people said oh you know you should just make this available on a, on a large scale <laughs> and so we um, had it professionally recorded and this is our CD and if you notice there's a plant a little plant on the cover with hands and the reason we chose that is because our children are like tender plants and we want to water them and nourish them and feed them in the faith and hence the name teach them the faith we didn't want to put catechism sometimes just that word has negative connotations for some people because they don't understand it and really it's about teaching them the faith.